Paul's determination for wealth and fine living drove him on. After each stint in prison, his ferocity grew, and he quickly set about looking for employment, seeking out bigger and better rewards. In 1977, Scottish landowner Lady Peggy Hudson was looking for a new butler. The man she hired was cultured, knowledgeable, and would work for low wages. But was he too good to be true? Scottish journalist Frank Ryan covered Hall's hunt for fame and fortune. You were one of the few reporters, if not the only reporter, to talk to Lady Hudson in depth. That's right. And what did she tell you about, about Archibald Hall and what he, what he was earning, etc.? Well, she said she had got him through an agency and she had got a reference uh, from a Mr. Wooten, who was in fact his father-in-law, but purported to be a, a businessman or some person of authority who could give a reference. So she was conned by that. Um, he earned uh, 20 pounds a week, which was very low even then. And she asked him why he was prepared to work for such a low salary when he could have been earning money either in the jewellery trade or, or in London. And he said that um, he loved li living in the country and he was prepared to sacrifice uh, salary for the life at Kirtleton. But for Codman Hall, it wasn't a sacrifice. It was all part of his plan. What about the interesting relationship between Archibald Hall and Lady Hudson? I mean, he was going to rob her, wasn't he? Yes, I think so. And he was also organising uh, robberies of big houses, county houses in the area. But he liked Lady Hudson. He said in his autobiography, written in jail, a perfect gentleman, that he had sex with her, just for charity, he said. <laughs> but that could be boastful, you know, because he was very prone to fantasy and boasting. The monster butler was in position and had set up the perfect con. Archibald Hall was out to make a killing. I'm Fred Dynage and I'm re-examining the case of the con man turned murderer called the monster butler. By the age of 53, Archibald Hall had been in prison 10 times for theft, forgery and possession of firearms. He was obsessed with fame and fortune. He would do anything to obtain the Hollywood lifestyle he so desired. Archibald Hall had gained employment working for Scottish landowner Lady Peggy Hudson. He'd smoothed his way in as her butler and made himself her perfect gentleman. Hall's young lover from prison, David Wright, had been released and decided to join him in Scotland. Lady Hudson took an instant liking to Wright and he became her odd job man. This proved a problem for Conman Hall. Wright knows that Hall really isn't a butler, but somebody who's going to steal from Lady Hudson. So quite clearly there was tension between the two of them from a very early stage. And that tension, it mounts and mounts until eventually, according to Hall, Wright stole a diamond ring from Lady Hudson that Hall then has to get back and replace before Lady Hudson realises what has happened. Their relationship reached a crisis point when Wright returned after a night of heavy drinking and fired a shot into Hall's headboard as he slept. He then hit Hall around the face with his pistol, causing his lover to bleed. Wright begged for forgiveness. Hall decided enough was enough. Solicitor Len Murray heard firsthand what happened next from the monster butler himself. The following day, out they went shooting rabbits. Um, Wright was a shotgun and Hall with a .22 rifle. Hall counted very carefully the number of uh, shots that Wright had in his gun. He had a total of eight, 
And uh, when he had made sure that eight had gone, he lifted his point two two and pointed it at a rabbit and gradually swung it round and shot right in the head. And he shot him not once, but he shot him four times, one in the head and then three more in his torso. An extraordinarily cold killing. <laughs>